and welcome to episode four of our pre-season series here on New Esports for the 2018 New FM Northern League One season. Uh, a fair few of the clubs already have invited us into their grounds, in fact in Cessnock's case, the coach's house. Uh, tonight I invite you into, I guess, my home away from home, the Hyber FC. We're going to catch up with Andre Gumprecht, Matt Moncrief and a fair few of the players as well. Uh, enjoy the video. I'm here with Andre Gumprich uh, of Cahiba FC. First of all, Gumps, uh, how's things looking going into 2018? Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Um, can't wait to start. Yep. Um, it's going to be an awesome season for us, and um, yeah, um, can't wait uh, to the first games kicking off, so that we can showcase um, our performance over the past two years. Yep. Um, to possibly better. But uh, if not, uh, we would like to uh, achieve the same level of uh, competitiveness. Yeah, um, obviously disappointment of falling short of making the grand final once again. Uh, you led after the first leg and that second leg obviously wasn't the best day and it was tough conditions, but I guess you've got to give credit to Bell Swans where credit is due, but you'll be looking to probably go one further this year. Oh, look, um, when you talk about finals and, and grand finals and stuff like this, that's not really... That's, you know, it's a tough one. It comes, it comes to the day and uh, whoever is better equipped on the day, dealing with circumstances, wind and, and everything else, um, you know, uh, this team will, will go further. Uh, of course, if you get into that same situation where we make the finals, or if we can make the finals, to make go one further would be, would be great, but yeah. um, our main focus is to make finals and uh, we would rather improve the overall uh, performance capacity of our team uh, than winning one of the finals. Uh, because yep. uh, for me, as you know, it's all about the process and the process is stronger than anything else. And um, we at Cohiba uh, have a long-term plan and, we, and we're preparing for the future. And the future for us means in two to three years time we want to play in year one. Yeah. Therefore, we need to put the process in place, and the process not necessarily wins you every single game, and maybe not a grand final either, but it will make, make us stronger for three years' time uh, when we're trying to pick the right players um, who still be able to develop and uh, doing the right thing for the right course, and um, and not charging us an arm and a leg uh, to be able to play for our team, as you know, uh, very 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 much happening in, in Newcastle uh, yeah. but this is not what we're going to do so therefore um, we 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 very and focus on players who, who want to come into the club and want to take the shirt out to be ready in three years time yeah um, have you changed I guess philosophy a little bit with uh, obviously Dave Hodson leaving and you brought in Asher Beasley and I guess maybe looking to have a bit more pace up front this year uh, look um, Having David in the team was always a bonus. Um, he has a lot of experience, and David uh, got brought to the club to to pass on his experience to players. Um, now we have young players coming into the team who are hopefully um, learning through the process, and yeah. we're asking players who are have, who are having the capacity to pass on their knowledge um, to really help those young young boys. And uh, as I said. Um, when you say changing the philosophy, yes, you, you can you can say you can say uh, we have because yep. we we are not in rush. We we taking our time and um, and um, therefore we have young players and we will believe in them. They can do the job in two to three years time. Yep. Uh, so therefore we will give them the time and um, that is what Kaiba is all about: giving players an opportunity to be long term sustainable and uh, be strong when it really comes. Yeah. Um, you yourself, I've seen you coach first grade, I've seen you coach the under sixes on Friday, Friday nights. Um, you bring the same professionalism regardless of who you're coaching, what age, you know, you, you want to see every player develop into the best player they can be. You're exactly right. Um, this, is, this is my nature. Uh, yep. this, is, this is who I am and this is, this is how I um, fulfil my passion as a coach. Yep. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're six years old or 40, uh, you know, the enthusiasm and, uh, and the professionalism is, is there. I don't treat anyone different. Yep. The only thing I change is, is the training content and yeah. uh, that needs to be suitable for the appropriate yeah. age group. 
And uh, I think this is what is my strength uh, to be able to change the tone, change the personality, and um, yeah, and change the overall behavior to really to really be able to find um, um, a good way of communication to to players um, or junior players, and um, that's why uh, there's only one club in Newcastle who can move forward, and that's Carlisle. Yeah, and um, for those who don't know a little bit of your history, obviously German and bit of a Bayer Leverkusen youth career and um, playing in the NSL, winning the NSL, playing in the A-League, winning the Premiership with the Mariners, you've, you've done a lot in your career? Yeah, I've, I've been around a few bit, bits of pieces, um, yeah, I've seen half of the half of the world, so um, it was exciting. Um, I've seen a few um, pro teams, um, have, have experienced a few grand finals, look, this, this all helps you. All right, to be to be able and, and, and you know dealing dealing with people and passing on experience and be humble enough to to you know to let people know how how you can achieve that and what is important where you need to focusing on and yeah. um, and it's not always happening tomorrow yeah. uh, because everything you do is step by step and um, hopefully I can be a um, you know a rock for players who, who need support and, and need. Need time to develop uh, because I think this is what this is what my strengths are. Yeah. And with that, uh, success will come anyway. Yeah. Do you think it's important for players to, uh, I guess, adapt as as they get older? You yourself, obviously, have gone from an attacker more to a defender, and you've changed your game over your whole career. Well, you, look, um, you you obviously uh, going through stages in your career, and uh, then uh, you you becoming more suited for certain scenarios on the field. Yeah, and um, the reason I potentially play in the back is because I can see the game unfold yeah. in front of me, and I can make decisions uh, accordingly. And um, through my experience, potentially see things a little bit earlier. And um, that, that, that is a position for me to be on the park uh, because obviously, uh, when you're getting older, you, you're losing a little bit of your speed. Yeah, um, and. Um, you can you can accommodate through that. Um, yeah, it's 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 that like I said, it's stages and, and be able to to play a position where you really um, you know can be uh, putting back um, to the team to, to be successful. Yeah. And um, what do you think is probably the main issue in youth football, youth development in Australia today? Well, I think uh, the main issue in youth football is lack of opportunities and, and wanting wanting to win premiership ships way way too quick. Um, and therefore, um, you know, older players uh, who are not necessarily better than, <laughs> than younger players, uh, yeah. always getting always getting uh, the the upper hand. And yeah. um, you can go wherever you, you like. It's it's happened all the time. Uh, and, and you know, it's it's because environments and football clubs demanding demanding success and performance. And, and that's and that's great. In senior football, that's very important. If you want to win. Grand finals and premierships and everything else, um, but if, if if you cannot mix that with a sustainable development for young players and providing an opportunity and and, uh, and, and a field where they really can prosper, yeah. then I think you haven't done your homework. Um, I'll ask you: Are you playing again this year? You're still tossing up. I'm playing this year, and I'm going to play stronger than I ever have been. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you saw it, but there was a player up at Cessna who said it was good to see you get out of the retirement home and get on the football field. Your comments on that? Oh, I have no, no comments. I, uh, I'm really happy for people to having a joke and a good time. You know, I always, <laughs> always uh, there for a good time. Uh, but uh, people obviously will then always fall short when uh, when Pussy is running on the field, and it and it will become realism for them that they may need to think of what they say. Yeah. Uh, final question, what are you expecting from the competition this year across the board? There seems to be some new signings at clubs and I guess different clubs raising their game and I guess trying to catch up with the likes of Kahiba, Bells, Wands and Cooks Hill at the top. 100%. Uh, this year will be one of the toughest uh, seasons ever. I think uh, that um, a lot of teams will uh, apply their rights to be in, in, in the top four. Yeah. Um, I very much looking forward to to that because that shows that Newcastle as a whole is moving forward, and uh, this is where we all want to be. We want to be in a competitive environment where we have yeah. 
good games and, and everyone is enjoying himself. Uh, people coming and watch it. Uh, the likes, the, the likes like you coming and and, and reporting. And um, you know, and giving even their five cents worth. That is all so important for, for the game as a whole, and uh, that's why I can't wait. And um, very much looking forward to um, see who is stepping up to the plate. Yeah. All right. Best of luck for the season, mate. Thanks. Thank you. Here with Joey Delbridge, uh, goalkeeper for Cahaber FC. Uh, first of all, mate, how are you enjoying your time here? Pretty good. It's nice. It's different. Different at Chelsea, so it's a better vibe. Yeah. The boys heaps welcoming. Yeah. I've enjoyed it so far. The training's with intensity. Uh, that's my form. Yeah. Um, how's it been so far working under Nick Hartman, obviously the first grade keeper and probably one of the better goalkeepers in this division? You learn a, learn a fair bit off him so far? Yeah, me and Nick go a little while back. When I was about 14 and I started to come through the emerging Jets and he kind of was there and yeah. taught me lots. So. He's pretty much taught me to be the keeper I am today, to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't really seen him at Kohiba so far. I'm not sure where he is, but... Well, I think he's in Japan. Japan? Oh, yeah. I can't complain about that, can you? But no, he, I'm really keen to learn from him. Yeah. And be under him and hopefully can develop and push the first grade spot with him. Yeah, maybe just put him on the bench. Yeah, why not? <laughs> um, you're one of the few players that have, I guess, dropped down to play in UFM from MPL sort of 20s. Uh, is it good to sort of come here and maybe get that chance to break into first team football and uh, you know make something of yourself? Yeah, I just wanted to come here, I suppose, for that opportunity and to get some experience against some older players, yeah. stronger players. At Chelsea, and I was in the 19s trying to break into the 20s, and it just wasn't working out. Yeah. Here, I'm in the 23s, and I'm getting a good crack at it. So hopefully, yeah. I can develop my skills as a player and yeah, break into first grade. Yeah. Um, has the 23 side obviously has been much spoken of it, but it's a pretty good team on paper so far. Are you looking forward to the season with them? 100 percent We've had I think two hit outs and one was against Edgy and we did quite well against them. Yeah. One was against Jeff as first grade, that was a different story, but it was good for us I think to go against the first graders there and yeah. see what it's like. And I think having that learning experience will be good for the season coming. Yeah. Um, you've got the buy in round one, obviously I guess that might help a little bit in sort of gauging where you're at and where the, the rest of the competition is at. Yeah, 100%. I think it would be a good week to go have a look at a few games, especially West Wall Zone, I think that's round two. Yeah. Get a good eye of how they're going to be. But yeah, I think it would be nice to see where everyone else is at and see if we can kind of step above that. Yeah, uh, Kohaiba's got a trip to Foster coming up, I believe, this weekend. Yes. Um, you're looking forward to sort of using that as a chance to bond with the team and get to know the team a bit better on and off the park? Well, I'm actually not going now. It's a last minute. Uh, parents are going away and I've got to stay home and look after the brother. So okay. it's a last minute. Yeah, cancelled, but I was very keen. It seemed like a pretty good trip and yeah. Yeah. Um, the rest of the pre-season obviously got a couple of tough games. I think Adamstown probably stands out as the main one. You're looking forward to testing yourselves against the quality of the Rosebuds. 100%. It'd be nice to go up against another NPL side and hopefully this time get a result out of it. Yeah. And I think for us as a team, it'll be good to see where we're at by the middle of the pre-season. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, get the three points out of that. All right, best luck for the season, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Here with Isaac Zek from the Cahiba 19 side. Uh, first of all, mate, um, how's things looking in 2018? Yeah, pretty good. We've got a pretty solid side so far. A lot of hard workers, yeah. a lot of people showing up sessions, getting a lot done. Yeah. Looking positive so far. Yeah. Um, Jared Gorsuch, the coach, he's over there. Yeah. Um, I guess, what's it like uh, working with him? Uh, he seems to be a little bit of a tinker man compared to some coaches in the 19s. He likes changing his tactics mid game and just the ever evolving coach, I guess. Yeah, it's definitely different to someone like Matty or Gulti, but it, it's alright, just doing his job, getting through a lot of pre-season due to his help, sorting us out, getting us to training and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Um, changed the squad a bit from last year, but he's, I guess, building, I guess, towards a push for semi-finals? Yeah, definitely hoping for semi-finals at minimum. We've yeah. all set a goal pre-season. Yeah. There's a lot of new boys, but there's still a lot that was from here last year, so yeah. hopefully it should be good. Um, what's the culture like here at Cahyber FC compared to, I guess, some other clubs around the place? Oh, it's just all pretty positive, relaxed, as you can see. Everyone gets the training, gets involved. 
all together. It's yeah. good vibe around the club, yeah. Um, is it good to have Andre leading the way um, as, I guess, the technical director and I guess all the players look up to him as the role model of sorts? Yeah, definitely, for sure. His experience is a huge help, definitely grows players. You've got yep. young blokes moving up into first grade and everyone moves up. It's very few that leave the club, but yeah. Uh, the ones that do aren't normally up to the cut. But. Uh, anyway, uh, the new face is bringing some confidence uh, to the side. Obviously, um, there's a lot of like you know Curtis Brady, uh, Preston, you know like Jensen. There's probably more. I'm forgetting. There's a lot of new faces in that side, and I guess it's sort of confident. And I guess it's been good to have a couple of hit outs with him so far. Yeah, it's good. Definitely, new players is going to help the squad throughout the year. But it's good that we've still got a lot of players come up from 17s and a few of us sticking around from the 19s again. Yeah. We've got a good mix between new and old and it should work well this season. Yeah. Uh, what is it like seeing a few of those 17s step up? Obviously Kyle Williams, Liam Whitehead, Kyle Thompson among those. Yeah, it's definitely a good thing that they're all stepping up. They're all hard workers, good players. Everyone yeah. deserves their spot that's in the team. Um, got some funny ones for you. Who's the funniest teammate? Funniest teammate? Probably Caleb. Caleb talks a lot of shit to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, fastest teammate and slowest teammate? Slowest teammate, Cal, for sure, by landslide. I'm heaps quicker than him, but um, fastest, probably Curtis, yeah. Uh, worst skills in the squad? Oh, worst skills. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. It's, there's not really anyone that lacks too much skill. They're all reasonably all right. Okay. <laughs> Poster boy of the team? Post Caleb again. Just pretty boy. Um, how many different fashion phases do you think the coach will go through this year? Obviously the Man oh. United jacket, the bleached hair, he's had some pretty iconic looks over the years. Yeah, he'll probably move back to his Cook's Hill jacket sometime <laughs> through the year. It's normally his go-to, but hopefully he'll find a guy one this year. Yeah. Um, last question, who's going to score more goals this year, Curtis or Jensen? I oh, know, it should be close, but I'm actually back in Jensen. Jack Jensen's got a good finish on him, very yeah. solid on the ball, so yeah. Alright, good. Best of luck this yeah. season. Thanks, Shai. Si. <laughs> We're Matt Moncrief, assistant coach, or co-coach, I guess, with the Hyber FC. Uh, how's things looking going into the 2018 season? Yeah, we're only just getting started. Um, probably a bit later than other clubs to get started this year, but the boys have been uh, doing, doing a night of gym each week, and, and building themselves up and we put a squad together that's um, that's fairly fit and don't really need a, a whole heap of running to get get it, get mobile but soon we start um, our, our game stuff and we'll start really getting hit our scraps hopefully mid mid March and we have the we have the bye first week as well so it's yeah. probably worth an extra week up our sleeves and then other clubs down have so yeah. yeah we're shaping up pretty good and pretty some of the turnouts have been pretty ordinary but uh, at the moment we're um, we're getting there we're Boys are starting to get the message that uh, seasons seasons around the corner, and we need everybody on deck. Yeah. Um, was last year, I guess, as a solid year for the side, but I guess a disappointing finish, bowing out in the semi-finals again. Yeah, oh, mate, I'm not I'm not big on the final series. I'm, I'm all about winning the minor premiership, and that's where, that's the best team in the comp. In terms of finals, yeah. is just a one. Yeah, as it was for us, it's just a one bad game and you're out, but a season proves who the best team was and unfortunately Cooks Hill were last year, but you know, we're only one one bad game away from uh, from taking the title, which is which is pretty good for us. So yeah. we're, uh, we wanted to win it, we, we run second, so it's not, it's not a, a bad year for us. We, we, yeah. It's a building year and we're, uh, we're happy we're at the moment. Yeah. Um, there seemed to be a real focus this year, particularly on building the 23s and the depth here at Cahaiba compared to previous seasons. Yeah, we're, we sort of we've lost a few old boys and it's sort of dropped our average age down by at least half, and we've still got Andre playing as well. So yeah. it's uh, average age wise, we're a lot better. We've got you know, I think our 19s probably half of them are new to the club, and the other half are from our 17s coming through. And yeah. our 17s are completely oh, it's a few from 15s last year, but 17s are new to the senior football anyway. And uh, and we've probably got five between five and ten new new young blokes in, in the 23s, the first grade squad that we're looking to uh, yeah, to, to rob, you know, catch a train with us for the next few years and, yep. and, and see how far we can go with it. So. Um, is it hard finding, I guess, volunteers now? You've got the 14s coming in, the, SAP, the SAP program. 
I guess this is a club that's always evolving, always getting bigger and bigger. And obviously, with that, you've got to find people for those jobs. Yeah, it's not so hard for us because we're one big club from sixes all the way through to first grade. So we've been, you know, we've we're a club of between seven and eight, seven and eight hundred people players. So obviously, that's a lot of people, a lot of uh, helpers around. Even when our fourteens and fifteens are. We've been a, a pretty tight knit group for the last last 12 months or so, so we have uh, a really good bunch of parents and, and obviously kids that that can help out and, and actually they're our future for the next next four or five years. Hopefully, we get many first graders coming out of that, and obviously uh, parents and volunteers to to, uh, to help us out as well. But clubs are always struggling with the volunteers, but because we have so many people, we we we're okay at the moment. We think we we we're, we're in a good spot, and there's a bit of a new committee on board. This year, not new, but it's a change. All the old committee still, still part of part of the club, but a little bit of change here at the top. But the idea would be still the same, and it's just to create a create an environment where everyone wants to play and and, you know, and, and be, you know, be good sports people. Yeah. Uh, quick apologies for how loud Andre is in the background. If you're at Kahibi, you'd get used to that. But our next question. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, the club isn't shy about promoting its intentions to play top flight football in the next few years. Yeah, mate, I'm, you won't hear any different out of me as well. Like, we want to be there in uh, when the next, the next, uh, the next time it's open up, which is in the next season we're told. So yeah, we want to be there. Andre and I have worked with our um, with our juniors, and it's a big thing for us if we can be uh, having a, at least an NPL 13s team come there in the next year because yeah. our, our tens our tens from our under 11s next year under 11s this year will be uh, the strongest kids in the club and then the tens behind that and we've got nine sap this year it's looking really really good for us so um yeah, we, we we're working hard on that and the NPL dream doesn't come about well so be it but we're, we're doing everything possible to make it uh, to make it happen and we're working on a new facility which will be hopefully around based around an NPL qualification as far as brand so all the car all the decks here ready to spread out and, and make sure we get uh, we have our, our application in there. It's pretty bomb proof and yeah. obviously performance on the field will we'll count for some and we think we're doing that in most grades. It's probably disappointing last year in the, in the lower 17s through to 23s results. Probably disappointing last year but we've really worked really hard on that. And yeah. Coaches um, Jared Gorsuch in the 19s who's, who's really put a really good squad together for the 19s and 23s are better and a good, good bunch of young 17s that um, hopefully will be, be part of the club for a long time as well. Yeah, um, unlike some clubs I guess that don't like promoting youth, some coaches are different than others, this is a club that will promote players that perform consistently in the 19s and 23s. Yeah, most definitely. We've got a young kid here this year, we got from another club who, who scored goals for fun and for some reason he wasn't wanted at the club. So. We snapped him up as quick as we could, actually before the season even ended for him when we found out he wasn't getting utilised like a, a young bloke scoring that many yeah, goals should. Yeah, we took um Yeah, there's none of that. There's Riley Ferguson's come back from, from Lampton. He was here the year before. Good young bloke. We're trying to get him into first grade and there's even a um, couple of boys from 19s that, um, that should be playing first grade. And Curtis Petrucci and Brady, Marie, Brady and Ritchie have already uh, had a dig against Lampton. There before Christmas and yeah. they did themselves oh, yeah. well. So yeah, we want as many young blokes in the, in the squad as well. Was obviously mixed with with our older blokes and especially our older state, which, yeah. uh, which is Andre. Um, you spoke about the finals and how it doesn't really play a part here, but was there obvious disappointment in the FFA Cup result against New Lambton and not being able to, I guess, progress one or two games further in that comp? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's different. It's a, that's a competition that, that's a little bit different to final series. It's a, it's a knockout thing, and yep. we go to win every game. And whether semi-finals against Bell Swans or whatever, we try to win every game. It's it's just about for me the end of the day the the best team in the comp is to win the minor premiership. And, and that day at Lamp near Lampton, we were, we were in it up to our heroes and we took a bomb to beat us. And and near Lampton, to be there would have been many teams that day because uh, yeah, they came really well. Um, Obviously, there's a need to improve the facilities uh, at Highbury, but I guess training-wise as well to push for the NPL. You spoke about that just before. Yeah, yeah, we, we know all that. It's a bit of a um, short-term pain, short-term pain for a long-term game for us. So we have a um, facility the council's um, going to put a lot of a lot of money, time, and effort into at the end of this year. That uh, hopefully by end of 2019 will be 
we'll be able to see a, a proper facility that, that supports a club of, of our size in this yeah. area. And uh, yeah, to be honest, the, the facilities where they are now, we can't really spend much money or do much to it because there's so much getting done elsewhere for us. So we need to just bide our time and deal with the cars we've dealt with at the moment. And, and uh, for that facility to get built, we're going to lose even other training grounds for for the late, late part of this year maybe and definitely next year. So we're, we're working on different facilities. That's where we are here. Here to that window. It's, it's a nice little pitch that council's, council's let us use. So hopefully we'll um, we'll be able to make this make this as best we can for the next 12 months or so. And obviously use the Harbour Avalon now as well, which is which has got a surface now that's probably as good as anywhere in the top. It's yeah. the same grass as what Dudley's got. And I seen Dudley's ground the other day and it, it looks Notch and yeah. I think Matty Lee took some photos and put up on our, our Facebook chat the other day of our ground and I don't know what he compared it to, some super tip pitch anyway, but we're, we're looking good, the council's looking after us and, and we're uh, we're happy and buy their time for a, a facility that, that, that can knock, you know, the MPL adjudicators can't, can't knock us back on the ground anyway. So. Yeah. Um, your thoughts, I guess, on the competition this year? Obviously South Cardiff made a few signings, Bell Swans now with uh, Dave Hodgson there. Cook's still obviously going to be up there again and a couple other dark horses, I guess, as well. Yeah, well, you see, look at um, South Cardiff and they look, they were probably the, the quiet achievers last year or, or were at the start of the year and by midway everyone everyone knew what, what they were going to get when they get South Cardiff and they're probably, for the, the, play, the players they had on the deck, they're obviously really well coached and probably to us, they're probably the biggest surprise packets last year and, and they've found, well, it sounds like they're saying well, they, they lacked a couple of good goal scorers and now they've got They've got plenty of goal scorers there, so yeah. they're definitely a team to watch. I don't see Bell Swans getting any better than what they were last year. They've lost probably the best, the best striker in the comp and picked up a geriatric, so I don't think that's going to be any benefit of them. But they have the, all the good young blokes there that they're well coached as well, and yeah. they've got a great committee out there. But on the pitch, it's hard to replace someone who scores those 20 odd goals for you or whatever it was. And from, I don't know how they, I don't know how you do it. You know? So yeah. it's it's a tough one, but anyway, it's it's. It's there, but I think it's, uh, then you got Cooks Hill, who, you know, big, got all the players there with all the big money, so we don't think um, they're going to be any better than last year. And yep. We still think we've got their best player anyway, so playing with us, uh, hopefully um, time will tell the end of the season and, and we'll see who uh, who comes out at the end, but end of the day for us, we've got a lot younger team this year and, and our goal is the yeah, end of next year being as strong as we can to put up the best application we can to, to be there. So, yeah. I um, spoke about money just quickly there. This this club is one that people say is a big spending club and one that's, uh, I guess, trying to buy players and you know, buy titles and whatnot. Yeah, I'm not I'm not into that. We, we do what we, we can do to get, get players here, but I wouldn't talk about players' money, but any coach that does is, is a bit silly. I heard a coach say the other day, a few of the boys commented on team at the team chat that... Uh, that someone quoted they only paying their players seventy five dollars a win, which is we all know is ludicrous because we know we do know players at the club who get more than that. But if people want to go out and say that no, that's fine. But yeah. It's, uh, it's not what we, we don't we don't promote that. Promote what we do to players. It we just try to get the best squad we can here and uh, and give them the best environment and, and uh, hopefully they stay stay for that reason alone, let alone money. Yeah. Um, taking a side up to Foster this weekend. Uh, are you looking to hopefully gel some of the the new boys together? Yeah, well, we, we play. We every year, every year we play against Cairnwall, and this year we decided to um, take a little bonding trip. So we're having a, a game on Friday night and, and a game again Saturday morning against Cairnwall up at Foster, and uh, obviously in between there and, and after, hopefully we'll, we'll do a little bit of bonding. So we uh, we get to know everybody's names and yeah. favourite beer they have and all sorts of stuff. But that's that's where we are in pre season at the moment. We're just there to have a, a run and get all the boys combined together, and you'll see tonight that. The 17s, 19s, 23s, first grade all training together. So it's a matter of uh, just trying to get everybody in the, the right mood and everybody knowing who everybody is and and, uh, and yeah, create a good culture for the year. Because I think we lacked that a little bit last year as far as combination from 17s through to first grade. And, uh, the culture just wasn't there. Just yeah, the first grade didn't have 17s. And hopefully we've changed that this year. And yeah, that's better for the future. Um, final question uh, after just one. Major new FM trophy here at Cahaba, your 17 side bringing home the Premiership in 2015. Is the goal this season to bring home as much as you can, whether it be Premiership or Championship? Yeah, we we want to do better in the lower grades. That's that's a big big push from from, from 
the last year's committee and the this year's committee, we, we want to do a lot better in the Yoa. We are a big, strong junior club, so we need to be represented out there in, in, in the lower grades. And I know our 14s and 15s are, 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 had really good results last year and they've probably added to their squads. And 17s are a little bit new to the thing, but the, the 19s have already had a few trial games and, and look pretty good. And hopefully our 23s and first grades will be um, as good or better. But for trophies, yeah, we want to win them. There's no, there's no two ways about it. But it's, we are, we sort of looking at a two-year goal at the moment. But yeah. We want to be, we want to be right up there. We, we don't think there's any reason why we aren't any stronger than we were, we were last year. So hopefully we can uh, get the results of the board and, and be, be a little bit more consistent than we were last year. And I think the results will come, and you know, hopefully that that brings trophies so be. But you know, uh, Cooks Hill, you know, if you talk to the coach, they're the team to beat. So you know, he talks a big talk, and I think they've conceded 20 odd goals in pre-season. Well, they probably won't concede any more than that this year, but for some reason they chose to play. Teams are going to get their ass, ass kicked in the, last, in the first few games of the season. So. But they're the team to beat and their results in the last three games, three weeks or whatever, so they ain't going to change anything for us. So they're the top team and I think Southie's going to be right behind them and, and, and obviously Bell Swan's a competitive team as well, which will be in the mix. But yeah. Whether we win or not, as long as we get better than we were last year, but it's tough to do because we won second last year. So. At the moment, any any only a win would be uh, an improvement on this year on last year's results. So I suppose yeah, we are looking for a trophy for sure. Yeah, best of luck, mate, for the season. Thank you. Thanks, mate. The direction of the track Beasley, one of the new signings here at Cahaba FC. Uh, first of all, mate, uh, what brought you to Cahaba? Um, well, I was probably looking for more of an opportunity at the first grade. Yeah. Um, I think Graham's got a very strong team at Cooks Hill and. Yeah, we, we had, I had, it was a hard decision. I had a lot of chats to both clubs. Yeah. And in the end, I decided to come out for Kyla to see what I could see what I could do in the first competition. Yeah. Um, I guess, was it frustrating last year to be scoring that many goals in 23s and uh, probably not getting a chance in to break into first grade? Um, uh, you know, it's always a little frustrating at times. Um, you know, during any season, yeah. But no, not really. Like it was, you know, I, Graham was talking to me for most of the season, just telling me what I could prove on, and you know, I just took that as an incentive to just keep playing as yeah. well as I could, it. and uh, yeah, just trying to break into the first team. Yeah. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's also disappointing to fall short in the semi-finals last year against West Wales, and those very two very difficult games. Um, did you learn anything from those two games? Uh, just uh, you know, finals football. You need to come in with so much more intent. Um, yeah. Westy had that intent, and we didn't. Yeah. Really, we uh, we sort of cruised in. You know, we kept saying it, trying, saying you know they're going to come in hard. We've got to come in harder. Yeah. But on the day, I think we just turned up and we were just too comfortable. And it, yeah, it just goes to show you know uh, what one intent can do with a game. Yeah. Um, are you looking forward to this season, particularly here at Cahyber, and a chance to really push into first grade and I guess cement a spot for perhaps years to come? Yeah, yeah, hopefully. I mean, uh, looks like a great club, and uh, I'm going to been taking serious some sessions and that. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's good. Seems like a good bunch of boys and some good players. So yeah, I'm very keen to have a fresh start here and uh, see see how far we can go. Yeah. Um, is the fitness work this club does, I guess, different to others? Um, Probably more intense. Uh, in terms of, I mean, there's, I mean, there's gym sessions. There's not, we haven't done that much big running sessions yet. I yeah. assume that will come later. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty uh, sure they will. Yeah, just over. Just coming back from Christmas. Uh, it hasn't been too hard. I think I thought it would be harder for a week, considering. Yeah. Um, yeah it's, Pretty unfit coming back, but yeah, it wasn't. It's not been too hard so far, but yeah, I think Andre is playing in the change. Yeah, I'm sure Gomes will hear that. He will make the difference. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Um, is the date Saturday, uh, March 31st, circled on your calendar? It's the day you return to the F field. Is there any intent there to score a goal or two against the old club? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, you try your best to to get back to the old club, you know. but you know, it's a good bunch of boys. And, no, no hard feelings there, you know, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, for talking to them all, yeah. Good bunch of boys. Yeah. 
Um, there seems to, you obviously went to Meriwether High, there seems to be a fair contingent of players coming through that, through that school playing in UFM, New Lamps, we've got a fair few of them. Is it good to see a few familiar faces around the league? Yeah, it is. I mean, and uh, when we were into the I, was, I think I was a big strong bonus for the league. And I draw in a few interesting characters. And, yeah, it's good to see some familiar faces around. Yeah. Um, is it dropping down in UFM, I guess, suddenly a very good alternative for players in the NPL system that might not be able to go from 18s to 20s or 20s to first? Mm. Well, I think, yeah, it's definitely made it harder uh, dropping the age groups in the NPL. And yeah. I think a lot of players who are over that 20s uh, age group are going to start coming down to the, to the uh, new FM and filling in those spots. So hopefully it'll be a stronger league. I think it's a good option. I think it's you know, starting to become a more competitive, better league. So, yeah. yeah. Alright, best of luck for the season, mate. So, cheers. For Jared Gorsuch, the coach of Hyber 19s, first of all, mate, uh, how's it been going so far in the 2018 preseason? Yeah, it's pretty good, mate. The boys are in the gym a few nights a week put in the high yard to try and improve on last year. Same thing as Maddie said, results are important, but it's about developing players they got and bringing new players in as well. Yeah, uh, you talk about those new players, you've got a fair few good players coming in, obviously the McRitchie brothers were fairly well sought after last year and you managed to bring them here and um, a few others joining them as well. Yeah, mate, it's like anything, you know, I'm mates with Curse and Brady from Blackout Toronto days. I spoke with um, Hawley from Walls End, he said, how'd you get the boys here? And I said, a pint, a can of Coke. I don't need the pie by the size of me, so I offered it to those boys. <laughs> um, you're looking forward to taking on some of the, the big guns this year again. Cooks Hill, Bell Swans obviously paved the way last year, and I guess you want to be up there in the top four this year. Oh, of course, mate. We tried to be there last year. Obviously, you know, the teams like New Lampton, the pressure's on them. They won it last year. They've got a good coach to go around again. Cooks Hill will probably be the team to beat with the, you know, the stars they've got in town. Best is a good bloke and a good coach. And there's also, to me, Craig at Walls End probably played the best football in the comp and just didn't seem to get results last year. So, yeah, it'd be a good, good comp. Yeah. Um, you yourself, you're a coach that sort of likes to study the opposition and I guess you know most of the competition and know what you're up against. Yeah, mate, you know, I like to get out and about. Gums has done a lot for my coaching game as well. Trying to get a good culture, a good positive vibe, trying to get any advantage I can and to communicate with the other coaches as well. So if you can pick their brain, you always try and learn as a coach. Yeah. Is it good to have your brother's support? Um, obviously, he's there to back you up every match day and I guess help you work with this team? Yeah, he's really good. He's probably the calming influence when I'm sitting on the sideline wanting to pull my hair out. He doesn't give too much away. He seems pretty quiet. And he's, you know, for a guy who supports Arsenal, he's got a pretty good football brain. <laughs> That's a fair call. Um, has it been good this last year and a bit working with Andre and Matt Moncrief? Of course, it's probably the best. To me, Andre and Matty are the best, the best two coaches in this comp by a long way. You've got other coaches out there, first grade quad, who come back from MPL who think they run this comp. Matty yeah. and Gorms are here for a reason, and we'll see in a couple of years' time how we fare. Yeah. Um, do you feel any pressure, I guess, from Matty and Gumps to that they might take some of your better players if they perform this year, or do you think that's a good thing for the, the, the development of those players? Oh, that's absolutely. That's one thing I said to Curtis and Braid and Callum Garbutt, Isaac Zeki and my team. I've got boys here that want to play first grade in a couple of years' time. Yeah. So that's the aim. If they come, they play three games and they go to first grade, so be it. But yeah. I'll just deal with the boys I've got on each game day. Um, obviously, I'd like to see Curtis score 30 goals, which I'm pretty sure he can do in the 19s comp. Yeah. Jensen, if he's lucky, might score five, so we'll see how he goes. I was just about to ask who's going to score more out of Curtis and Jensen. There's the answer. Um, who do you think is probably, I guess, maybe a dark horse in your team to watch? Oh, Caleb O'Donoghue, to me, is probably one of our best players. He came sort of late last year or midway through the year. Sort of took us a bit, a bit of a year off, I guess, from what I've seen compared to this year at pre-season. It's probably a completely new player. He's been coming to gym sessions, which is unusual for Caleb last year. Yeah. But he's here really to have a go, which is something I'm looking forward to. Yeah. And final question, you have been pushing the team pretty hard. You've organised some trials so far. You've been doing the gym work. Has there been progress? Oh, absolutely, mate. Come, come you know, first round, we've also got the bias, so we'll be going in week two. We will have the fittest team in the comp. I can, I can wholly say that now. Um, we will be playing a bit of catch-up, but as I said, the pressure's on Cooks Hill, New Lambton, Westy, all those teams. We're just there sort of to have a kick about and see if we can improve on last year. Yeah, best luck. Mate. No worries, thank you.